And da -da 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 -da. La la la. Hey guys, welcome to Jamal Okikon day two. Okay, so today I got a bit stuck uh, at work. I had to get uh, to see the um, uh, conference uh, with Camila Coelho and Gary Pinajo about luxury brands and bloggers, the winning formula. And um, I'm gonna try to make it to the conference, which is using your influence for a good cause. So yalla, tao mai. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ourselves we used to edit the videos and that takes a lot of time uh, so today we have a team to help us even like with uh, you guys' um, feedback that I received through email I have someone who filters everything like uh, feedback and sends it to me every Friday so I know what you guys are liking what you don't uh, what you are requesting for me to do and that helps me out to creating my upcoming uh, content so yeah it's a, it's a crazy lifestyle but I really try since I work with my husband we work together we really try to separate personal life from work life because I need a personal life as well and uh, for me when I'm so overwhelmed with work because we work 24-7 I work 24-7 24-7 I'm thinking about content for you guys I'm thinking of what I'm gonna do or I am actually working like answering uh, when I'm not photographing a book or, or doing a video I am answering interviews and it's 24 7 so I need to have those down times for my family for my friends for my husband so that's how we uh, that's the healthy way to you know continue doing what we do or else uh, I felt like a few years ago when we were, we were so stuck, like I was like, oh my gosh, it's too overwhelming, what am I going to do? So I, I needed to take a step back and like really uh, take time. Because for me, my happiest time is when I'm with loved ones, like family, friends. and uh, So when I take that time for myself, everything makes sense and I'm less stressed and I do my work uh, ha happier. I'm like, I'm happier with my work and with my job. I never felt like, oh, I made it or I got there, I, I, this is amazing. Yes, everything that's happening is amazing, but I always feel like there's more that I can do. I believe that we have a power to speak to so many people. I have a power to speak to so many people. And, and yes, it is important, uh, but we also do like, uh, besides that, we also do um, an event every year or two years, which we don't really um, put much out there. Maybe we should to inspire people to do the same, but uh, I take uh, from that closet that I have, I take all of my stuff that I don't want to make a, a, a fashion fundraiser, we call it. So I pretty much sell all of my stuff, which a lot of things I wore once or twice, or like new things. and. Uh, I sell all of that and all the money that we raise, uh, we donate to charities. We mostly help our hometown in Brazil, which is a small town that needs help. The last thing, the project we did was a, a surgery center. We built a new, a completely new surgery center at a hospital in Minas, which is a hometown in Brazil. So we really try to, I know I have the power to, you know, engage people and to make it stronger. I have a big have a big word on it but we try we are also always thinking about um, others and people who are in need and uh, yeah <laughs> I hope I answered your question Good to be in Lebanon today, surrounded by beautiful people, especially our speakers. The format of this panel is going to be um, some questions for Jessica and Tanya, and then I got uh, three envelopes with some questions for 
uh, both speakers, they don't know about these questions, and then uh, we'll take some Q&A from you. Um, it's hard to introduce uh, Jessica because she's accomplished so much in her life, an inspiring life journey. Um, Miss Australia, uh, runner-up for Miss World, um, graduate of law degree, of business degree, law um, specializing in uh, uh, human rights, family rights, refugee rights. What else, Jessica? Help me. Business administration. That's about it. That's about it. Okay, good. <laughs> Is that not enough? <laughs> Then we have Tanya, who's the Lebanon representative of uh, UNICEF in Lebanon. Tanya has. Um, <laughs> Tanya has graduated from University of Michigan with uh, in political science. Uh, also has an MBA from Columbia University. She's worked for UNICEF uh, before Lebanon. She was the representative of UNICEF in Costa Rica and uh, Central. Central African uh, Republic and uh, today we are here uh, to discuss with them um, several things. Jessica has worked with UNICEF before. Uh, I went, no, I went uh, with UNICEF to the Zaftali Camp in Jordan last year with Vivito. Yeah. That was great coverage, Jessica, by the way. Thank you. So how do you say this person is the person I want to have them involved in UNICEF? Um, I don't think there's one magic formula. So media, different people, be it from ambassadors to influencers, is that we give them a specific role and we give them to ask them to intervene or influence on a specific topic because it has to be dear to the heart of the person and there has to be some connection. So it should just be, are you interested in being part of Unison? Typically we try to match them with a specific issue that is really to their heart where they can change or have an influence. Why? Do we influence is because the, really the fundamental of what UNICEF is trying to do and everything that we do and actually what you do when you're in working in development is changing behaviors. So they asked me to be a part and I was so happy because it was in line of what I love to do because I've been doing charity work since I was 17 years old and it was a brand that I love, I've been working with for a while so it was just a match made in heaven and I said of course I'd love to go and uh, first of all I'd love to see them on the ground because it's so different doing charity work and donating and versus going on the field and actually seeing the hardships that they go through, the stories, the conditions and what organizations like UNICEF are doing on the ground. They're providing them with so much education and psychosocial support and, and so many so, so many skills as well, equipping them with skills that they could hopefully use one day when they leave the camp. To become an ambassador is an incredibly long process. It takes about five years of us, UNICEF, actually working with the person to teach them. Because, exactly, we want to know that the person is matched to the organization, will be committed to it, continue to work with it, and the subject actually resonates. So, I think as some of you know, Ricky Martin came here last year for UNICEF. And in his case, he's been working with us for years, and it's very much about child protection. He has an NGO in Puerto Rico. It's his life commitment to his children and him. So these are the type of people we choose. So in the case of when you may not hear them, actually, it's probably not an ambassador. Maybe we've connected with someone on some campaign, but an ambassador for UNICEF is actually a lifelong commitment. It was started with Audrey Hepburn. So with the fashion team and the whole movie theater. theater. And it became a lifetime commitment for her. And why she was such an amazing ambassador is because she managed to use her child as a history. And really, she received UNICEF help when she was a kid. So Jessica, for ambassadorship after this conference. <laughs> Jessica, you and I did a trip few months ago to Bangladesh. That's how we met. That's how we met. We met after a long flight. It took three days to get there, or two days and a half. It was a, a journey in itself. And these people are just going through something that's in, incredible. There's 600,000 of them in the camp. And it's a very, very sad situation because when you hear the stories of the things they've been through, I think it's almost like a scene from Game of Thrones. And this is how I explained it to people because no one understood it. Almost when you're listening to the stories, you become numb as to how detailed and insane they are. You arrive and you're like, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to spread this on social media. Everyone's going to know about who the Rohingya people are and we're going to make change. And when you hear this, it's like, 
how can I even make change? Like, who am I to kind of, like, this woman's life has been altered forever. Her psyche, everything. So, and there are so many other stories. All you can do, I think, is educate the world on who these people are, why they're being discriminated against, and how we can help them. And the way to help is via these organizations because, you know, Walking through the camp, you see logos everywhere, but you see the good work they're doing everywhere. You see the children um, centres with UNICEF. You see, um, you know, water systems in place. You see the hospitals. You see everything that's being provided for them, and at such a fast rate. Can you imagine? In Bangladesh, you have 15,000 people at one point. Correct me if I'm wrong. Arriving in one day. So imagine being an organization and having to cater for 15,000 people arriving in waves. Like, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? So they're doing all that. And they, they're doing incredible work, really, on the ground. Like, I can't stress enough because a lot of people ask me, and there's, I think, a stigma with big organizations as well. They ask me, oh, you know, these big organizations, they pocket all the money. Or um, is it really going to the refugees? Where is it going? And, I swear, when you go on the ground and you see the hard work, I mean, in Bangladesh, it was with a different organization. It was with UNHCR. What kind of communications dynamic goes between UNICEF and an influencer when wanting to communicate a message? Well, the first thing you should know is that we actually don't allow any altering of the picture. So that's the first turn off. What, what do you mean by altering? Like You can't um, do like any kind of altering or Photoshop of our pictures. So if you want to be involved with UNICEF, it's against the rules. It's a very basic one, which some people have a hard time with because it means that you actually have to show. The rules that we have is very much, I think it has to come down to, I mean, we also screen and we have a relationship with the, with the person posting. We want to use that brand to educate and also to influence. I mean, the two. And so some of it is breaking down stigmas. So in the work that you've done very much about bringing the, to the world the attention of that issue. But also, for instance, here, when we did our back to school campaign, it was to break down this notion that going back to school and the only kids out of school are refugees. Actually in Lebanon there are a lot of Lebanese children who are out of school and so we want them back in school as much as we want them. So we, we really, they have to be screened and we work with them but more than being controlling I think is to have a common agreement of what the goal is and what you want to pass as a message rather than the other way around. He's an amazing writer by the way. I don't Thank know if you guys, can you Thank tell them a little, a little bit about your book? He's on a Thank book tour guys. right now. He's amazing. Uh, Tale of Tala. Pick it up. It's in bookstores. It's about a Palestinian girl who leaves a refugee camp in Lebanon and gets uh, in the hands of human traffickers in Europe and sadly she becomes a prostitute in Slovenia. So it's based on a true story of uh, a Syrian girl it's about human trafficking and Tale of Tala is in bookstores. I was so scared, so scared before I started posting. But when I started posting and the reaction I received from people, they, they told me out of all the messages I received, the hundreds of messages, the ones that resonated most were the ones that said, Jessica, nothing else on our timelines for these couple of days mattered other than the stories of those refugees. Because it's, it's the same thing all over again on our timelines. How many times do you flick through and it's just mindless sort of escapism and it's just mindless, you know, the double tap, the go, double tap, like it's never something that's going to open and expand your mind. And I think instead of going online to switch off, we need to go online to switch on and learn. Thank you. Uh, there's a young girl in the back there. Yeah. She's an aspiring fashion designer. She's so talented. She draws and she's so sweet. <laughs> um, what advice? I think the most important thing is to be genuine. Just like we're all created equally different. And the more you embrace that, the more I think you'll find your, uh, your passion. I posted a picture today of the three of us and I got negativity over this. And bullying is something that is not new to our world. It's sad. It's really sad about it. I, when I was a kid, I, w I had negativity over my ears. I love my ears today. I think you have, uh, have great ears. ears. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. You've got great ears. Yeah, great. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Hey, that's the other side. <laughs> so I think that we need to remind people of how to to remind our kids and remind our communities and ourselves as well that we have a lot of things to embrace in ourselves. I don't see them as negativity. I laugh at this point when I, but there are. 10 year olds and 9 year olds and I live in America and I've seen kids in America sadly take their lives after being bullied and I think it needs to be part of our education system, it needs to be part of organizations that work with kids and I think that we need to learn how to laugh at negativity because a negative comment is definitely coming from a negative person, it is not coming from a positive person. No, you're right, 100%. I think. Thank God I don't receive many negative comments. Um, I'm going to jinx myself, like get home. <laughs> Start writing. <laughs> um, thankfully I don't, but if I ever do, I mean someone who bullies and speaks negatively is automatically an uneducated person to me because there's constructive criticism, which I appreciate and if anything I respect. Um, I think it's so important to be honest, but if it's someone just being negative, then you know they're hiding behind a keyboard. And um, someone gave me very, very good advice. If you don't like something, just turn your phone off and like, it doesn't exist. So as long as you're confident with what you're doing and you know like, you know, you, you've done everything perfectly, then you don't worry about anyone. Just to get back in the zoo, I've actually, my specialization is war zones. I've worked in war zones since I was 22 years old and 23 years old. But, and I, so of course you see a lot of very tragic situations, but I think for me that is precisely the fact if you have feeling of confidence that you're making a difference, and I think you have to be realistic. Making a difference is not saving the world, it's literally impacting someone's life and making a small difference. That's what makes it worthwhile for me, so I've dedicated my life to that. But I think it's that, it's, you know, it makes you richer and you go back into your world and you appreciate more what you have and you're more realistic and you also change, you, you impact those around you. And it's not a question of preaching to those around you because I think that's not the point, but I think you do. But I think it only enriches your life, it doesn't in any way. Influencer. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Are you like the audio? Like, yeah, yeah, I hope wanna, but no matter how. If you want to follow any person, the easiest words to type is Z I A D. Just follow this guy, watch his profile, unfollow him, and <laughs> block him, and leave, and follow Zero and White. And paper let's, packages. Let's edit out that part. <laughs> let's all follow each other. For example, we are all we love let's go. <laughs> so guess what guys? Ziad is going to do some makeup and I'm going to vlog him. I'm <laughs> L'Oreal. So follow me. Are you ready? <laughs> Your blue labadi labada. Oh my god. Guys, I have a mask. I'm yapping a lot of. You're brave heart. Got the blue one, which is the black leg. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, we're gonna say goodbye to Ziad. Bye Ziad, Naima. I'm going to show you the mask. I'm going to show you the Nice. 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 Nice.